Racket has a data structure or a way to define data structures as pairs. The constructor is called CONS, which is a short for construct a pair. Um, and the constructor of a pair essentially takes two expressions as a parameter. So you can think of the cons function as a function, and it is a function. Uh, you don't you, you don't need to think of it as a primitive uh, construct. Uh, but here we just uh, included in our definition of the syntax just to make it a bit more explicit or to give a bit more emphasis. But it is uh, a, func a regular function. It behaves like one, unlike the or, for instance, which is not a function. So let's move on. So cons, you can create a pair, and it's pretty simple. You, you do cons, and then you put the two arguments, which are going to be the contents of the pair. So let me... Uh, write an example. So I'm going to do code pair dot record. Okay, now I'd open the file. I'm going to do lang record. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do cons. And I have one value and two values. So if I do record, you can see a pair shows up with this little quote here and then parenthesis and the values are separated by a dot or a period in the middle so this is just how a uh, record renders that so if you because the first and second things are expressions we can write composed express we can uh, write function calls on it because an expression is a function call So what I did was I added a function call to 2 plus 3 and another function call to 10 times 20. So if I run that, I get what you would expect. And this is record, so it doesn't really matter where you show the code, right? You can add some spaces and it still works perfectly fine. Um, what else can you do with this? You can, you can put place whatever you want here, including another cons. So if I were to do uh, three and five, no, actually let me leave this example as is. So you can see that in the first element of the third pair that we created, we have yet another pair. So pairs can be nested. It's not a problem for Racket. So expressions are evaluated as any normal function call. A simple pair creation. Okay, so I've documented this. Uh, and now, here we are. So this is basically what we wrote. Now what I want to do is I want to write an example. Uh, I want to introduce CAR and CDR. And CAR, C-A-R, is uh, because Racket actually is a descendant of Lisp, which is a really old language, one of the first programming languages that were created. Uh, and at that time, they didn't have a lot of space uh, in terms of computer, computer didn't have a lot of memory, so they couldn't write really long names. Um, and therefore, car means the first element, and CDR obviously means the second element of a pair. So now, what we can do is we've learned how to define things, right? So now what I'm going to do is define a pair, and I'm going to do define P, and what I assign to P is this pair right here. I'm going to comment out the code before. You can feel free to uncomment it, just so it's less confusing. 
what's going on. Okay, so everything worked as expected, right? So in the first, in this nested, it's in this pair, which contains a, a pair in the first element, so it shows there, so CR returns the first element, returns the second element. So we're not going to use pairs a lot, so you don't really need to memorize this. It's just more for an example. Okay, so now I want to introduce a bit uh, test-driven development. Um, and this is something that will show up in your homework one. You will see that there's lots of test cases that are kind of helping you uh, know or assess the correctness of your homework. But ultimately, just by submitting to grade scope, you will know. So what I do, I just copy paste here and I wrote this code. And when I try to run it, I get an error. It says parse pair swap is not has not been implemented. And this is the task that I want us to try to do. So we want to implement pair swap. So how does it work? Well, we wrote a test to kind of specify its behavior. So if you have a, a pair one, two, pair swap should return two, one. So I put first the expected value. And I put next a call to the function we want to test. Actually, let me move this code before the call. Okay. And now when we call this, we get an error because it says function has not been defined. So I want to comment this out. Okay, so pair swap has not been defined. So we can create that. So how do we create that? We can do pair swap. So now you can even write to do. And this is what you'll see in homework one. You'll see a bunch of functions that have to do. And when you see that, the only thing you have to do is then for your homework is replace to do by its contents as we'll do here. So now if I run it, I get this weird error that says not a procedure. And as you should know by now, a procedure is what record calls a function. It's saying that to do is not a function. So let's try to understand why this error is showing up. So what, what did we do here? So first we need to know where is this being called? So where is the error showing up? Well, the error is showing up in line 28. Okay, so it's this thing that is wrong. And what it's saying is application, not a procedure. So application in record means a function call. So this is when record tries to do a function call, it's finding something that is not a procedure, right? Um, given, so expected the procedure that can be applied to arguments. So given to do, so to do is the function that it's trying to call, and the arguments will be one and two. Okay. So let's try to figure out where this is happening. Well, it has to be here, right? Because this is pair swap, and we know that pair swap is assigned to to do. And we're trying to call to do as if it were a function, but it isn't because we haven't defined it. So this is the kind of error you would see if you try to call something that is supposed to be a function but currently is implemented with to do. You might be confused, what is this weird quote here? Um, this is just a special kind of string that record has. So whenever you put a little quote and you can write a string, that is just, think of it like a string, a weird string that you don't want to use. <laughs> so this is just to flag something like an error or something like that. So here we are. We want to make this a function, right? And we know that it's a function that takes one argument because we are passing one argument, which is a pair. So we've learned that we could do this in two ways, right? One way we could do a lambda that takes a pair P and returns P, just for the sim simplicity's sake. Okay, so if we do this, now it's able to call it. And what it's doing is it's you pass one, two, and it returns one, two, right? Because it's the argument here. Uh, the argument replaces the parameter p in the body. So you replace p by 1, 2, and that's what you're returning. And then check equal is going to compare 1, 2 against 2, 1, which are different. So this is the value, and this is the expected. 
and they're di different, right? First one is called the actual, and the second uh, element of check equals is called the expected. So what we're seeing here is that, of course, we didn't implement pair swap correctly, but the, this is the error. Another way, an equivalent way we could do to define um, pair swap is just to define it like this. This would be equivalent, right? So this is known as a function definition, and like so, this version is a function, a lambda is a function declaration, and if we use the shorthand notation, this would be a function definition. And we get the same error. Right, so next, what do we want to do? Well, we want to implement pair swap. And we know that we need to use a constructor, right, because we want to create a function, we want to create a new pair. And we only use the accessors to read the contents of that pair, right? So what we want to do is we want to return a new pair. So we want to do cons. It's going to have something in the first argument, something in the second one. What are we going to do? We want to swip, swap the elements. So what we want here is the second, right? And what we want here is the first element so that everything is swapped. Okay, so how do you get the second element? Second element CDR, as we can, as we just wrote there. So CDR of P. How do you get the first element? Well, that's CAR of P. Okay, and now let's see if it works. Now you don't get any output. And this is, this is a good thing. So when you have tests, if you don't get output, that's great because it means there's no errors. Why? Because if you have, imagine you have a thousand tests, if you have a thousand things saying, okay, 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 and then one thing that is wrong, you wouldn't see the wrong thing. So in general, and that's actually a unique uh, philosophy, is in case of okay, silence, don't show anything. And in case of error, be very loud, show lots of error messages. So that's why if the test passes, you don't see any output. And that means everything is fine. Okay, so... If I were to write the test incorrectly, then I would get an error again. See, 2-2. Two, two. I'm expecting 2-2, two, two, but I, I swapped 1-2. Of course, the test is wrong here, right? Okay, so we've implemented this. Uh, next example is... So, just to recap... Um, oops, sorry. So, pair swap, what it does... Is this a, a constructor or is it an accessor? Try to think about that answer. Maybe pause the video and resume once you know. Okay, so I'm assuming you already paused and then resumed. Uh, and this is in fact a constructor, right? It's, co it's constructing a new pair that is flipping the order of the contents. So therefore you have to create a new one. So you, we are calling CONs, which we've learned that is a constructor. Okay, and the accessors are CAR and CDR. So internally, we are using accessors, but pair swap itself works like a constructor. Okay, so in the next example, what we want to do is we want something that, let's see, if you give it two pairs, one, two, and three, four, it returns four, six. So what do we think is happening? Well, the name is called pair plus, right? So... Well, in this case, what we're doing is we're adding one with three, we get four, and then we're adding two with four, we get six. So let's try to implement that. The nice thing about this example is that now we have to combine pairs with uh, numbers that we've learned previously. So first thing we do is, because this is test-driven development, first we write the test. Now we run it, we get unbound identifier, and we know that unbound identifier means function has not been defined. So we define it. Pair plus. Okay. And we know that this is a function that takes a left and a right, so we'll just write that. Let's just do returns to do. One thing you may be wondering is why does it have a plus? In racket, as you've seen, 
plus is an, an, a regular function. So actually you can use plus in, in your function names. And that's actually something common to see in the standard library of Racket. Okay, so now we run and what we see is I return to do. So when I call this function, it's just returning to do. And then it, what the test is checking is the pair for six equal to do. Well, no, that's a failure. That's why we get this output, right? And we can see the line number 38. So this is the test that is failing. And it's telling why, okay? So now we want to implement this, right? Okay, so to implement this, we're going to return the addition of something, right? So we know that we are going to call the addition of something. Okay, so what are we adding? We're going to add... Oh, wait, we're not adding that. What we're returning is a pair, right? So we need to do cons of something. Okay, so what is the first thing we're going to do? We need to add first of left and first of sec of right, right? Because we want to add one and three. So we want to add things together. We are going to call plus, and then we want to call first. What is first? Is car car of l. So we're adding with the car of r. Okay. Similarly, we do car cdr, which is the second. Right, CDR returns the second element, so CDR of left and CDR of right. And now, everything is fine. So let's say we did a mistake and instead we, would, we did multiply. So if we did multiply, in this case, notice. Notice what's happening. So we have, what is the test that is failing? It's this one, right? Because it says line 41. Um, and then left hand side you have 4, 6. Yes, that is fine. And then the second one, it's saying that calling pair plus is returning 3 and 6. Okay, so now we no need to look at pair, need to look at cons. And we notice that the second element is fine. So we know that this expression is fine. And this one is different. So the, el the first element of your pair is wrong. So th this is where I would start to figure out why this is wrong. And in this case, it's pretty obvious. We know that this should be a plus. Okay, good. So we've passed this example. Finally, what we want to do is uh, an example where we write um, the lexicographical ordering of a pair. So first let's write the example. So just one note, because I didn't say this before. You see this requiring the examples, and that's just to say that you need to import a module. And to import a module, you can do it anywhere in the code really, as long as it's before its first use. So that's why it's here, but usually people put it in the beginning of the file, but since I just copy pasted this, it's like this. But you don't need to do it multiple times. You just need to do it once. Although if you do it multiple times, nothing wrong will happen. Okay, now we run it again. And now we have multiple tests, right? So if you try to run this, we get an an error on line 47. Okay, 47, unbound identifier. So what that is, pair less than hasn't been defined, right? So let's define it. So we know it's a function with left and right. I don't know what's gonna do yet. So let's first look at what it's gonna do. So now I'm gonna call it again. It's gonna say error, 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 to do and everything, right? So let's see why. It's saying this should be true. Okay. So the, f the result of pair should be true. And here it's saying the result of pair should be false. 
So you can see from just by looking how the function is being used that it should return a boolean. Okay, so let's write that here. Returns a boolean. Okay, so it returns a boolean. What is lexicographical ordering? Well, it's when you have a pair, you're going to say if the first element is smaller than the second, el the first element of left and right. If one is smaller than the other, then the whole thing is smaller. That's what we're saying here. But if they're the same, if one is equal to one, uh, in that case, uh, two is smaller than three, so the whole thing is smaller than, right? So if they're the same, they're false. If you have one, but then this is greater than, then that means the whole thing is not smaller. So to be strictly smaller, you go from left to right. And if, if, um, and for the pair to be, from for the left-hand side to be smaller than the right-hand side, um, all the elements up, you know, either the first, first and first has to be smaller than the, s the first of the second. <laughs> So complicated. Okay, first of left has to be smaller than first of right. Or if it's not, uh, if th if they're the same. Oh, actually, I need to write an example, another example, because it's kind of silly. Otherwise, if this is three, right, and this is two, this is already greater than. So in that case, this is false as well. Oh, false. Okay. Another example is if this is three and this is three and you get two here, right? So this is equal, and the second one is smaller. That also means false, okay? So what do we need to do? Okay, so for this, we've learned how to use Booleans, right? We've learned that we need to use cont. It's the only thing we've learned how to use. We have also learned that it could be with an end, right? So kind of depends. So first I'm gonna write it with cond. And actually cond in this case might not be the nicest thing. So then we, I, I will show you how to convert to and or or. Okay, so first thing we need to do is if um, the first thing, which is car of the left is smaller than the first thing of CDR of right. In that case, okay, I return true, right? Otherwise, if um, if the first thing is greater than the other thing, which is this case, then it should return false. So let's write that. So if this is car of L, CDR of R, right? Uh, then what I do is return false. Oops, this should be CAR and this should be CAR, right? Because we're taking first element of both. So if the first one is less than false, the other one is left, we do this. Otherwise, if it's equal, They're both equal. What do we do? Well, we check, we're going to check if the first and second values are um, smaller than, right? So it can only be smaller than if the second thing is smaller than, right? So let's do, this is equal. What we return is, is CDR of left, CDR of right. And this see if this passes. Okay, this actually passes. So what we can see here is if let's see how we're meet, meeting each each branch. So first one, first one is this case, right? This is first case, first branch, right? Because CAR, so first element, is smaller than two, then you just return true. Okay, so that's that. This one, 
these two are equal, so what we do is we return 2 is smaller than 3, which in this case is true, so that would be third, third branch. In this case, what we do, um, they're both the same, so if this is equal to this, then these two are equal, so that would match here as well, so third branch. Third branch, and this is third branch as well. And here, what we have is, they're both equal, so that's also third branch. Third branch. And here, this is greater, so that would be second branch. Second branch. Okay, we didn't change the code, so it should still work. Okay, um, can we simplify this? Uh, we might be able, let me see what I wrote in the solution. Uh, I wrote with ends and roars. Okay, yeah, so this is much cleaner. <laughs> so first thing is uh, either the left-hand side is smaller than or if it's not, then the left-hand side has to be equal and the right-hand side has to be smaller. So that's another way to rewrite this. So let's do version two. Actually, we can copy this. What? I didn't copy. Oh, I think I pasted the whole slide. Okay, I'm gonna copy. I'm gonna copy the ugly version first. Okay, finally, pair left, right, doesn't seem all fine. Oh, didn't remove that lang over there. Okay, this also works. So you have ugly version. This is more like imperative style. <laughs> and this is, uh, I was more inspired when I wrote this version. Okay, um, in the next video, we're going to cover lists.